Hey folks, welcome to another VR related video. Uh, today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial through the Meta Haptic Studio. Now, haptics are vibrations. Uh, I've got the Touch Pro controller in front of me here, and the vibrations that you feel when you're holding the controller that's haptic vibrations and it's using audio waves and pushing those audio waves through the controller to kind of vibrate and give specific sensations uh, what the meta haptic studio allows us to do is actually customize and build those haptic solutions uh, those sensations that we want players to feel in their hands when they're using the controllers with the quest pro uh, they do uh, as you can see in the two audition haptics, have you actually connect your Quest 2 or Quest Pro device to Haptic Studio Desktop? Right now, I am not connected, it says at the top. Um, and it does recommend, if possible, to use the Quest Touch Pro controllers because they offer higher fidelity haptic feedback than the normal touch controllers. It says, before we do a deep dive into haptic design, let's start with a few fundamentals. So we're going to start with amplitude. Amplitude and frequency are the two components to sound and haptic vibrations. So as it says here, when creating haptics, there are three fundamental ways to control the motor inside the controller that produces the vibration feedback. The first and most important feedback is amplitude control. When controlling amplitude, we are modulating the amount of vibration or the force that the motor is creating as it moves back and forth. We control amplitude by editing the amplitude envelope. In this clip, we have a square envelope with a strong intensity. So if we press the B and Y button on the Quest controllers, we can audition this haptic. Now we don't have our headset connected yet, so we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So to connect the headset, we do need to connect by a USB cable. So now I've switched to on headset so you can see how we activate the haptic studio on headset. We just go to unknown sources here. Uh, it will load this particular application, Meta Haptic Studio. These other applications are not related. Uh, they're just other unknown sources I have on my Quest Pro at the current time. If we click this, it opens Haptic Studio, kind of a companion application. Oh, and here we are. So we've actually got the tutorial loaded up. Uh, this is weird because you can actually see the tutorial in front of me because it's it's got pass through on as well. Uh, but we're gonna audition strong. Ooh, ooh. It does audition strong amplitude here. So now we'll audition subtle amplitude, and the vibration is different for each modulation here. This is very cool. Editing the envelope, it just said detailed modulation and this is kind of like a like a almost a motorcycle rumble that's very cool so the sensations show up right in headset it's very cool so I'm going to put the headset down for now, and we're going to walk through more of the tutorial itself that explains the sensations I was just feeling in headset. It's very, very cool, though, that all of this walkthrough kind of happens together. So strong amplitude, we just did the demo. Um, subtle versus strong, it says, the graphic illustrates a strong and long duration vibration um, if we were designing haptics for an event that was triggered frequently in a game, we might consider a less strong vibration to not fatigue the hands of the players. And I guess that's true when you have your hands with vibrations against them. Over time, they're going to get tired or they're going to start to fall asleep even because of the vibrations and the constant sensation of those vibrations. So let's try the amplitude envelope. This amplitude envelope instead. The envelope is much lower than the first and therefore the sensation of the vibration is much more subtle. Again, it's explaining the difference between the strong and the subtle amplitude in this particular description. You've got modulating the amplitude, you've got a triangle here as the envelope with the vibration contained in the middle. 
One of the biggest challenges in haptics in recent years is the ability to not only set and control a continuous vibration, but to also dynamically modulate the haptics. In this amplitude envelope, the intensity of vibration changes over time and is not fixed like the previous examples. The amplitude envelope slowly rises to a peak and then fades down. And I can say when I felt that in headset, that's very true. It's, it's really cool. And then editing the envelope, you can actually move around and click and change points here and it'll change the sensation that you feel. Then with complex amplitude, with the advantage, <clears throat> then with complex amplitude, with the advances in haptics playback support, we're not limited just to simple modulations. In fact, we can modulate the motor of the controller at a very fast rate. This is where we had that rumble with the motorcycle motor kind of holding the handlebars and feeling the vibration. Um, so we used an actual sound clip to get to that. And then frequency is the second way to control haptics. Uh, so we can actually switch this selector from amplitude to frequency. And what frequency is doing is controlling the speed at which the motor vibrates, similar to how the gas pedal in a car causes the engine RPM to go up and down. And then we would check, we would compare low frequency vibration to high frequency vibration. So we'll go ahead and do the high frequency and then the low frequency in headset. So now we're in frequency. Let's go back to amplitude. Let's see if I play back the sounds in amplitude. Yeah. I'm just trying to get to the point where I can feel the difference here. So we've got strong amplitude, subtle amplitude, simple modulation, editing the envelope, and then the detailed modulation. This is the one that is playing that sound clip. So revving the engine there while gripping a handlebar essentially. So now we're going to do the frequency files. So we've got introduction, there doesn't seem to be any sound associated with introduction. Do high frequency. Oh yeah, so it's the length and the speed of the motor running essentially in, in the controller I can feel. And then the modulation, yeah. It's a very different sensation to the amplitude actually. That is very cool. So the high frequency sound feels very different from the modulation sound. Both of them are almost like a sharper feel to them than the amplitude. Uh, it's almost like a piercing, like it almost feels like it's cutting into the skin of my hand. It's interesting, very interesting. Whereas the amplitude just feels like more of a rumble. So we close frequency here so we can get amplitude to open back up. If we do like simple modulation here, play that back. Yeah, it's very different. I really like this detailed modulation one. That's very, very cool. So we had a high frequency clip and we have a low frequency clip. High frequency vibration uh, is, I'm still kind of feeling some tingles from it to be perfectly honest. Um, the low frequency vibration feels much softer than the high frequency vibration, I agree. And then frequency modulation, again, similar to the amplitude modulation, you can control and shape that wave. So now we'll talk about emphasis. It says introducing emphasis points. So far we've been controlling continuous vibration by modulating amplitude and frequency. In the previous examples, the haptics are generated over several seconds. But what if we wanted short and crisp haptic feedback that should only last tenths of a second? Maybe something like a sharp button click. That's where emphasis points come in. So use an emphasis point to make a short momentary haptic feedback. In the editor, the emphasis points appear on the amplitude envelope. So let's switch back to that. You can see them here now and take a moment to feel these three 
emphasis points. So we're going to look at those emphasis points. It looks like there's intensity and shape for the emphasis points. So um, I'm going to read these first. Now that the just like the amplitude control, we can actually control the intensity. We can actually change the shape if we want to. And then it says emphasis shape. Emphasis points can also be modulated by their shape. The best way to think of the shape is to imagine the different types of clicks that we have in the real world. So again, you've got a round, normal, and sharp, and you can see the shapes here in the example. And you can change the emphasis points to the three different shapes as well. So we'll go into emphasis in headset. Yeah, it's definitely got a different feel to it for shape. It's interesting. Very, very cool. And then last is audio analysis. So we'll play back the clips here in headset first. We've got amplitude first. And this almost feels like we're in water. And then we've got emphasis. I'm not even feeling anything with the emphasis. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like a drill. That's fun. All right. So we're back in the tutorial uh, in the audio analysis section. It says in the first part of the tutorial, we introduced the amplitude envelope, emphasis, and frequency envelope. Haptic Studio has the ability to automatically generate haptics from an audio file. This drastically reduces the amount of time it takes to get to a good starting point for a haptic clip. When generating haptics from audio, you can influence the resulting haptic by using the parameters in the analysis section. The first two parameters will focus on the gain and resolution controls influence the generated amplitude envelope. The gain control either attenuates or amplifies the amplitude envelope, thus creating a softer or more intense haptic output, and the resolution control changes the amount of breakpoints that are generated from the audio file. A lower value will lead to a smoother envelope, whereas a high value will lead to a more detailed envelope. Go ahead and play around with those controls to see how they impact the resulting haptic experience that was pretty cool um, and then in emphasis we've got emphasis parameters the next two parameters in the audio analysis section influence the automatic creation of emphasis points so you've got sensitivity um, and envelope reduction and then the final section of course is on frequency parameters that uses an audio filter and haptic output so it says wrapping up and next steps. By now you should have a grasp on the fundamentals of haptics and how to use Haptic Studio. What you can do is you can actually either import your own clips or there's an entire library of clips, uh, which I will put a link in the description for and I'll also share on screen, that were built by Oculus Studios that are free to use and you can actually use in your application. Uh, so. I am not a haptics expert. This is the first time I've walked through this, but I feel pretty good about a little bit of an understanding of the difference between amplitude and frequency and how they affect haptics and also how you can shape things with specific emphasis. So before we close this window and go to the Oculus Sound Library that I was talking about, what you can do is actually export this. And what it does with that clip is it exports the clip in a .haptic file. You can take that .haptic file and using uh, the Oculus SDK and the Haptic SDK in Unity, you can actually import your haptic profile directly into Unity that you built in Haptic Studio. And whenever you want your controller to do certain things and vibrate a certain way, it's going to happen right from your Unity project. It's that simple. So this is Oculus Audio Pack 01. Again, I'm going to put a link to all of this in the description of the video. But I just wanted to give you an idea. They've got creepy horror sounds. So there's squishy, slimy, bones breaking, chains, clocks, creaks, creatures, drones, groans, impacts, pipe organ sounds, scratch, scratch reverb, Skulls cracking, strings, whispers, lots of sounds here. And then you've also got sounds for floors, footsteps, body movement, impacts, actions, weather and ambiance, indoor hums, machines, actions, etc. User interface sounds. So if you needed to, for example, control the volume in your 
user interface. You could maybe hit a button and it'll play a specific sound in specific tones, things of that nature. Uh, vocal sounds, door sounds, stings car sounds and interaction sounds. And the other thing to mention is the license for this is a Creative Commons 4.0 license. So it is something that is kind of a public domain suite of sounds that you can use in applications that you publish with MetaHaptic Studio. So a lot of good resources. I wanted to share this mainly to prospective developers, but also if you have a desire to learn more about haptics, I feel like MetaHaptic Studio is a cool tool to learn a bit more about how haptics are created.